Money and boots. A good agent would never risk his mission to save a woman. That's going to be a very costly mistake. Keep dreaming. The masterminds in Resident Evil Resistance are important antagonists to the series. They even introduced a new character called Daniel Febron, a security operative within the Umbrella Intelligence Division. Perhaps we'll see more on this character later on. Oswell E. Spencer is a selectable mastermind as well. He was barely seen in only one game throughout the series, that being Resident Evil 5. So if anything, his appearance as a mastermind in this game is rather welcoming, as this also makes it a bit more sense as to what he was doing in his final days, before Resident Evil 5. Now, we all know that new masterminds and survivors will be available over time, so for this video I'd like to share some of my ideas as to which characters of the series I think deserve a spot as a future DLC mastermind, 5 to be precise. And the first one I'd recommend would be Chief Brian Irons. Brian Irons was a complete psychopath. If any mastermind deserves to be in the game, it'd have to be him. Even if he's not technically someone Umbrella would authorize to make these human test runs, I would only assume that he would do this without Umbrella knowing about it. Maybe they would be aware of his hidden actions, but they probably wouldn't bother stopping him, as they'd most likely use his experiments as free testing of their latest creations. For his creature cards, I'd say he should summon Paleheads. They were introduced in the Ghost Survivor scenario of Catherine Warren, which had Chief Irons in it. For his boss card, I'd go with a G Embryo creature. Seeing as that hasn't been included yet as uh, one of the creatures in Resistance, and it's basically what killed him in the story. I like the idea of Irons getting a bit of that irony. The next mastermind we could use is Alfred Ashford. With the inclusion of Alfred Ashford, we can see the return of certain exclusive creatures such as the Bandersnatch, any of the spider variations from Code Veronica, albinoid creatures, and as for the boss card, I'd go with Nosferatu. Originally I was thinking that Alexia Ashford herself could be summoned, but since this isn't THE Code Veronica remake, I'd say it's best to wait for that game to reveal her remake appearance first, rather than the Resistance game. However, Nosferatu can still be a formidable boss to control. His abilities would be well suited for attacking multiple survivors at once. Moving on to the next mastermind, I'd say James Marcus from Resident Evil Zero. I think Marcus needs a new character design that best fits the new remake series. I wasn't very fond of the fact that he could change his appearance to be that of a young man in RE0. And since RE0 needs its own remake, perhaps they can change his fate with Umbrella since there are already too many characters that are betrayed by Umbrella and want their revenge against them. We need more antagonists with different motives. If you can control leeches, I think they should do more than just pile up together to make an annoying leech man. But since it is a difficult creature to deal with, maybe it can actually be played as the boss card, allowing the player to stretch to a tall and distorted form, wiggling around like an inflated flailing tube man. <laughs> I'm sure this could become an annoyance to the survivors if they can't land an accurate shot, because of its thin appearance, while swinging its arms around, smacking anyone that's close by. Or even having it collapse and let the player control a horde of leeches to have them swarm a survivor draining their health bar till it's fully depleted. My ideas for James Marcus as a mastermind are still in the works as you can see, so let me know what ideas you'd prefer for him as a mastermind if it is a good idea to include him. Anyways, next one on my list is Albert Wesker. So originally, I wasn't sure if I should add Albert Wesker in this list because I believe that the mastermind in the front cover of Resistance is actually Wesker himself, but with a new realistic character design. His jawline doesn't look the same, but it's probably just part of his new remake appearance. Wesker is the one character that would be best for representing a mastermind of the series. Heck, he's even doing exactly that in the Biohazard Patches Law introduction, something I love using as my outro to most of my videos. But even though I'm sure he is that mastermind in the front cover, I'd like to mention some of the creatures he should have at his possession. Now we all know what boss card this particular character should have. He's gotta have the original Tyrant as his boss card. I don't think anyone would disagree with that, seeing as he was so astonished by the creature itself, making for another ironic twist after seeing that the Tyrant would kill Wesker the moment it was unleashed. 
Once again, I gotta remind everyone that Wesker did originally die from the Tyrant's attack, but Capcom decided to bring him back due to his popularity with the fans. So I'd like it if they kept his original personality before he became a superhuman type of character. I'd like to hear dialogue that connects to his original intentions before he used his STARS members as guinea pigs. As for his special skill cards, we need the zombies to look like the ones from the Spencer Mansion. Or at least include crimson heads. Perhaps let us unlock them as additional zombie skins. But most of all, he's gotta introduce the Chimera as his creature cards. The Chimera were also responsible for killing Wesker in the novel written by S.D. Perry, so they too must be included for Wesker to summon. What I don't want to see is Plant 42 as the boss card. I feel like Capcom would easily turn towards that idea because they love reusing assets, and I'm sure they would just take the Yatavio boss creature and change it up a bit, making for a very easy new boss card. I guess the easiest design they've come up with so far for a Mastermind boss card would have to be Spencer's wall grid. Yes, I've seen it be utilized in ways that it can take down the entire team, but it's very uncreative and boring. I don't want to see this type of boss card with any new Masterminds we get. I mean, might as well drop an anvil on the survivor's head as a boss card if that's the case. So, since Albert Wesker is a character we're all pretty damn sure that he'll be a mastermind and the guy in the front cover, I won't be counting him as part of the list. The fourth character I want to see as a mastermind is Dexter Whitlam. This character was introduced in one of the stories from the Resident Evil Wildstorm comics. This is a very underrated character. Not many fans know about him since he was only introduced in the Wildstorm comics. But those of you who do remember him, I'm sure they too would agree that Dexter needs to be a mastermind in this game. I hope the developers look back at the characters created in their old Wildstorm comics because they have a lot of potential in that department. Most of them managed to fit the tone of the original games, and some of them even received a great amount of character development, and Dexter Whitlam was one of them. He's the one character who would enjoy torturing these college students the most for sure. This job as a mastermind is basically made for Dexter. I want to see his own type of experiments as exclusive creatures. I want to see his boss card be injecting one of the survivors and actually taking control of that particular survivor in order to hunt down the rest. Only he would have a cure to reverse the effects of the G-Virus immediately. This would be an amazing perk for Dexter as a mastermind. And I don't see why this couldn't be done. If it sounds like a lot of work, just reuse the character model of Birkin's first form and change its appearance a bit using a distorted survivor character model in place of William Birkin's model. I bet all of us would love to see what Jill's tyrant form would look like the most. If you want to know Dexter's story from the RE comics, I'll put a link in the description for a fully narrated story about him, including at the end screen annotations. But anyways, let's move on to the final mastermind I'd like to see in this game. Morpheus D. Duval. This character was the main antagonist of Resident Evil Dead Aim. He was a facility director for the company Waste Disposal Facility on an island in the Atlantic Ocean for Umbrella HQ's R&D division. Umbrella blamed him for the outbreak at the Arclay Laboratory in May of 1998 and was immediately fired. To get back at Umbrella for falsely accusing him, he stole several T-Virus samples, including the experimental T plus G virus, and proceeded to hold the world for ransom using a hijacked luxury cruiser. He threatened to use the new virus as the warhead for the missiles from a missile base constructed underneath an abandoned BOW disposal facility, which he kept hidden from Umbrella. I know there's a chance that Capcom is trying to rewrite the entire series, and that means excluding the existence of certain characters such as this one. But I hope they decide to keep them all instead and rewrite certain characters to better fit the story, like with James Marcus. I think that that character along with Morpheus Duval have a lot of potential for a main antagonist. Morpheus in Dead Aim had a similar fate like with William Birkin, injecting himself with a virus, hunting the main characters throughout the game, and ending and becoming a giant slithering creature. The creatures he can summon should be the elite hunters which I'd love to see what all the designs would look like. Perhaps as his boss card, he can summon the Tyrant 091. This Tyrant had a really disturbing appearance, so I can only wonder what a remake version would look like. I'd like to see a similar design to the original version so that it's not too different like with Nemesis in the remake. 
But if this tyrant does not become the boss card, then maybe the other boss from Dead Aim known as Pluto can take its place. This bloated tyrant is just as creepy as the tyrant 091, and it moves bizarrely fast which can catch players off guard for sure. However, these two boss creatures are only second best when you compare them to mutated Morpheus. At first I was wondering if it'd be possible to let the mastermind himself jump in as the boss card and take care of things himself in person. It'd be impressive to see him jump down in the area where the survivors are, followed up by a flash of electricity and have him instantly mutate in front of the survivors. I'd like to take control of him and electrocute survivors, leaving them stunned for a while as I attack the rest of them. Give him a move that allows him to dash incredibly fast to a designated highlighted spot in place of a different attack. And in place of another attack, he could repel every bullet fired at him, making the players basically shoot themselves accidentally, seeing as guns were completely useless against him. But that's about every mastermind I hope we can see as part of the future DLC for Resident Evil Resistance. If you have any other ideas, be sure to let everyone know in the comments. What? I'll explain later. Open this door from the inside. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.